episode of Geek Era Podcast. And with me, we have a very special guest. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, you bet. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Spike Spencer. Most of you guys probably know me as uh, Shinji Akari in uh, the Evangelion series. I'm the uh, the OG, the original one. And uh, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing that people know me for. Or possibly Bleach. I'm in Boruto right now. Bungo Stray Dogs. Um, uh, League of Legends. Uh, Kled and Wukong, the Monkey King. Uh, old World of Warcraft. Um, and I'm going to be in the Playmobil movie that's coming out very shortly. I have four uh, four roles on that. Um, yeah, those are the main things, and uh, we'll talk more about other things, I'm sure. Cool. So first off the bat, uh, how did you get into voice acting? Well, it's it's interesting because I've I've been an actor uh, for about thirty years, and I I went to the I went to college for it. I majored in drama. I uh, got a baccalaureate degree from the honors program, majoring in drama, and nobody cares. Nobody cares. <laughs> it's but I went pro back in uh, roughly 1987. I started acting on uh, camera and film, and I've been uh, on screen with uh, four Academy Award nominees. Um, two of them won, and um, but that was back in uh, Houston when I was living there. Uh, so I was doing things in New Orleans, Houston, Austin, Dallas, that sort of thing. And uh, while I was there working on films, uh, I was working on a little um, independent film called – how was it called? Imposters, I think it was. And I don't think you can find it anywhere. But it starred me and Amanda Wen Lee. And at the time, uh, Amanda was doing some directing over at AD Vision. And so we were hung, hanging out on the set all the time, and she was like, you do all these voices, and you're funny. Why don't you come over and, and – uh, record for some uh, anime. They'd come out and audition. And I'm like, anime? What's that? And she says, well, it's Japanese animation. And I'm like, I said, like, cartoons? She said, not really. And I said, does it pay? And she said, yes. And I said, I'm there. Let's go. <laughs> so I went over there and uh, auditioned. Uh, the first role that I auditioned for, I got, um, it was a small role on a thing called Super Atragon. Um, and then uh, I think I had... Uh, Takateru in Suikoden, and then uh, I think Evangelium was the next one after that. So that's what started me there because it was just a, a fluke that I was in Houston, and uh, it's pretty amazing uh, how it all happened. Uh, so then I moved out here to L.A. Uh, 14 years ago, and uh, fortunately I, I had some contacts, and I've been working out here ever since as an actor. I've uh, been able to pay my bills for the most part uh, with voice acting. So that's uh, quite a uh, success story in Hollywood. So that's where I am. Oh, that, that's cool. Uh, what would you consider has been uh, your favorite role so far? Mm, well, it's an interesting thing because I always play either the young, effeminate little girly boy who saves the world in a biomechanical robot or a psycho. Um, I prefer the psychos. Uh, actually. So um, Kled from League of Legends, probably my number one. Uh, maybe Papillon from uh, Buso Rankin would be my number two, I think. Somewhere, those two are great. Although I did enjoy playing um, uh, in uh, Arachne in Blaze Blue and uh, gosh, way back in the day, uh, Little Boy in Spriggan. Those were fun. I always remember those roles. So. Yeah, psychos. <laughs> cool. Uh, and you've, you've been doing some other stuff besides the science voice acting. I heard you, you, you started writing books. Yeah, well, you know, I wrote uh, my first book I wrote in 2007, uh, actually, because I was started appearing at cons, and I was like, I got to have something to sell. Uh, and I'm like, I've always wanted to write. So I wrote um, How to Be a Frickin' Genius Voice Actor, Step 1. Um because I had been teaching uh, acting and voice acting for a while, and I was like, "Well, that's a cool book. I'll just I'll just write that. Uh, get to the very very basics of voice acting for the the con uh, people who there who who don't really may may or may not want to be you know professional. It's not like, hey, here's how to be a professional. This is about how to get started. Um, and uh, so that was I wrote that, and so I've been selling that." Uh, along with my second book that I wrote after like a year later, um, I wrote What Happens at the Con Stays at the Con, Stories from the Seamy Underbelly of Anime Conventions and More, Volume 1. 
And that, so those are the two of the panels that I do. So somebody who's listening to this now, who's been to a con where I am, they've probably seen me doing one of those two panels or more. Um, so I did those two. And um, I, so I wrote those and I've been selling those uh, internationally for about probably 12 years or so. And, um, and I've turned them into uh, audio CDs. So I, I, they're audio books on CD. But now nobody has CDs, so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to make it work. Uh, and I'm actually – I'm rewriting What Happens at the Con Stays at the Con Volume 2 right now because I've been saying there was going to be a Volume 2. So I'm adding stories, redoing some of the old ones, um, and adding some some extra uh, items, and I'm going to actually publish that one uh, within the next uh, month or two. So that's actually coming out. Uh, the other book that I did just publish on Amazon was – based on my other panel that I do at conventions called Don't Kill Your Date and Other Cooking Tips. And the book that came out of that, and this is all about, it's basically dating for men mostly, but women are always in the audience and they're always backing me up going, yes, listen to that man. Um, but I, the book is called Food Game. That's all one word, Food Game, A Man's Ultimate Recipe for Dating Success. Uh, the ebook is available on Amazon and we launched that uh, last month or the month before. And uh, it's not available in print yet because we're still having issues with the cover, but it will be available in print uh, anytime now. So that's yeah. where we are. Uh, what would you say, you know, the the first advice you, you sort of give to people as far as, you know, there's probably a lot of people in the conven convention scene as well, sort of international, uh, you know, to sort of improve themselves to get to the point that they're able to, to date people. Well, the first thing is, and it's really, really simple, it's learn. Um, I tell there's a chapter in my book called Kaizen, which is J Japanese for constant and never-ending improvement. By the mere act of trying to improve yourself, you are, in fact, improving yourself. And so that's the easiest and fastest way to do it is read. Read other people's books who have gone through things that you want to go through. Don't try to do it without the knowledge. There's There's... We've got Google. I mean, there's all the knowledge in the world um, at your fingertips. So start reading, start using it, start understanding. I mean, food game is a great place to start because I basically I spell it all out for you. I say this is how I went from uh, a, a divorce and a bankruptcy, lost literally everything I knew and loved, and moved out to LA knowing four people, and. I had to build myself back up from that. I had no game. I had no confidence. I had no self-esteem. I was desperate, lonely, and just awful. And I said, all right, this, this is not going to stand. I'm better than this. And so I started working on myself. And that's how the talk started happening at conventions. So the book actually began at anime conventions because uh, I was giving my talk, Don't Kill Your Date, and Other Cooking Tips, because people had been asking me, well, what are you doing, man? I mean, you're... Uh, and I said, well, let me do a panel and just talk about dating and self-improvement. And it took off. People loved it. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do that. And uh, so that's the first thing. It's the very, very first thing is just go. Because that's whenever I got out to L.A., first thing I did was I went to Barnes & Noble. And I went through the self-help, self-improvement books. And I would spend hours just there reading different books. I read The Game by Neil Strauss. And now I've written for Neil Strauss uh, for his blog. Um and I was just I was learning everything I could about being a better human being. And then when you do that, you take that step, you are automatically becoming a better human being. So that's that's the easiest thing I can tell you. Uh, that's true. Uh, speaking of, uh, you know, reading and learning thing, uh, your quote on IMDb is when you get into hentai, jump in feet first. <laughs> uh, is there uh, some context behind that quote? Where the hell is that quote? <laughs> um, that's funny. No, I've only done one hentai. I've only I've only voiced one, and it was hysterical. And I was just like, okay, fine, just do it. You know, it's like there's tentacles, there's screaming. It's just nutty. So <laughs> it's like if you're gonna do it, you better do it. You know, you can't be timid with your acting. So if you're gonna act, you gotta go for it. Seriously, was where just, was that? Just quote? wondering we, what was the the context <laughs> behind that quote. No, that's that's pretty much it. I have no idea where that quote is. Where did you find that? It's on your IMDb. 
It is? Oh, I'm going to have to get that off there. Oh, hold on. What's the, That's funny. Oh, that is the, the quote here. Uh, yeah, so the quote is, if you're going to go with hentai, I say jump in with both feet. If you want to st- uh, say, if you want safe, stick with Disney. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that is 100% true. Uh, it also says like you, you've done some uh, major acting work with a, a few big celebrities. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, see, that was the one I was telling about uh, talking about earlier. I've, I've been in scenes with four Academy Award uh, nominees, and the big one people would know is uh, like Sandra Bullock. Uh, I was in Miss Congeniality. Uh, and I had a scene with her for two days. I got to work with her in Austin, and then um, I got cut out completely uh, of the movie. And it was funny because we were watching it um, last year. We were, we were just watching it, and we saw that scene. I was like, oh, this is my scene, and we're looking and everything, and, and suddenly we saw me behind her, and we went, freeze! <laughs> we took a screenshot of that, and I posted it up there. and like, see, I'm not lying. That's me. Uh, so that was cool. Um, I got to work with Frank Langella for uh, five weeks on a Disney film called uh, Now You See It uh, with Allison Michalka and um, – oh, who else? Great kids. Um, Johnny something. Um, and uh, so that was that was five weeks down in New Orleans. Uh, and that was really – that was an amazing time. I thought I was going to be doing more work and that was that was like right before everything went to crap uh in houston so uh that's a shame because i would have been doing more work there the other one uh also around the same time was tommy lee jones he cast me uh in a film called the three burials of melchiatus estrada yeah nobody saw it um but it was up for an academy award for best writing best screenplay and uh he directed me and um i got to be kind of in it it was i was in a scene with him but he directed me so it's basically i was on camera with him and uh, i have a great shot of him looking at the screen uh and it's like somebody took a picture behind him and i'm on the screen so he's looking at me on the screen i was like that's the coolest shot ever uh and then the other one is a lot of people won't know the older people might know alan bates um i did that back in the early 80s with uh late 80s uh, and he was up for Academy Award uh, way back when. Um, and yeah, so there you go. Um, that those are the main people that I worked with. And uh, yeah, it, it it all kind of it all changed when I came out to Hollywood because <laughs> you get out to Hollywood and like, well, I've just done uh, all these films and all these people. Hollywood goes, I don't care. <laughs> we don't care. Get over there. It's like, oh crap. Well, cool. yeah. So I haven't been on film. I haven't been really on camera in about fourteen years. Do you ever miss being, you know, in front of a camera? Yeah. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I don't like the audition process, uh, you know, that going in and say, like me, like me, please like me. I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm just done with that. Um, it's pretty an- annoying and kind of soul crushing, to be honest with you. Uh, so I just, you know, now that I'm, I got married and uh, I have a baby and I just stick with uh, voice acting and working on other business entities. I do real estate investments and I do business coaching and personal coaching and that sort of thing. So that we're getting those businesses up and running. I'll, I'll continue to do voice acting because it's 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 easy for me. Um, I've got a studio, you know, in the house and I just go down there and I do all my auditions. And if uh, somebody wants me to do something, you know, long range, I just go down there and email it to them. It's really God bless the internet. It's so amazing. Cool. Uh, yes. So, was it one of the things? Uh, you, you know, with uh, Neon Genesis back on uh, Netflix at the moment, I heard you're doing a sort of a live streaming. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I'm hoping you'll uh, have a link to some of my things in the in the show notes. Um, we, Amanda, Win Lee, and I, we were deciding. We was like, well, you know. What can we do? I came up with that idea. I was like, hey, let's do a watch party. We will watch uh, two episodes of Evangelion on Netflix, not our voices, the redub. And I'm like, okay, we'll watch. We'll comment. We will give behind the scenes 
thing. Oh, remember when we shot this back in you know, at ADB and uh, and we just get goofy and uh, I drink some wine. And she has her pot and we just sit there and have fun. So everybody watches us watch. We all do it at the same time. So if you're watching, we all say, OK, we're ready to hit play and go. Boom. We all hit. Everybody hit plays at the same time and watch Netflix. So we watch an episode. We talk about it and have some fun. And then um, after the two episodes, we have a and a so we just go through and everybody we just talk to everybody so it's it's basically hanging out with us for 2 hours uh which is has been a lot of fun and we're getting a lot of people loving it they're just saying it's it's funny as hell cuz it really is i mean we just talk about all the stuff that we did uh on the original stuff you know we're not we're not here to to pan anybody or uh say good or bad things about any of the new dubs it's it's our opinions on you know hey i like this i think oh remember when i screamed like this and they scream like that. Oh yeah, okay, it's good. And I like this one. Or, or like you know, it's it really. We're very honest about it. You know, if there's certain aspects of it that that Amanda will know better because she directed and wrote uh, a lot of it as well. So she has the big time inside track. So we just said, well, let's do it. And uh, we did it once, and everybody was like, God, you guys got to do it again. So we did. So we did number two, and we're about to do number three uh, this Friday coming up. Cool. Uh, you know, one of the friends of uh, our podcast, uh, as I said, uh, he was actually in the, the one of your live streams. So he says it's a fantastic event. Awesome. I'm glad. We we just have fun. We just like you know what? It's just hanging out with friends. That's all it is. Um, and it's a it's a great night. And you know, it's twenty bucks, and some of that is going to charity as well. Um, we send, we send money to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society as well. Um, and, uh, we just, you know, it's 20 bucks, you know, I mean, we sell autographs for that much, you know, but you get two hours to hang out with us and, um, you know, make new friends and you chat with other people and it's just a little community event. It's a lot of fun. True. Uh, you know, I know that, you know, some of the voice actors with, uh, you know, the current dub have been getting a bit of slack. Do you have any advice for, you know, for them? The one that's, you know, probably been through the... The strange times, the good times, the, the bad times. I've been through it all, man. I, you know, it's funny. I wrote an article. It's on my blog. If anybody wants to go to my my uh, spikespencer.com, go to my blog. And I wrote um, what to do when one is Shinji. <laughs> uh, and I wrote it all basically to Casey mostly. And just to say, hey, here's what to expect. It's a wild ride. I've been on it for 25 years. So, you know, I know what's what's coming your way and you know fans are fans there's going to be good and there's going to be bad always i've heard i i i'm watching the you know twitter feed and all this and i see well people are some people love it some people hate it um that's their opinion and and either way they're right because it's their opinion you know i just stay out of it because one i'm a diplomat and i like working and i don't really cast aspersions on other people's performances because that's a choice that was made and you know something i've always told um voice actors or people who want to be in voice acting i say look understand we are as one of our a teacher i know he says look we're instruments i'm a voice actor meaning i'm an instrument the director plays me and tells me how to do this and do that i don't agree with them or disagree with them i just do what i do and I said, well, OK, if uh, that's the way it works, you can't I can't say that any of the voice actors are bad uh, or good. I think they're all extraordinary, actually, um, you know, and they did what they did. And I think great. Good for them. You know, it's it's a retelling. It lets people know that Evangelion is a great show and it really is. So I wish them all the best. Uh, best of luck on all of it. And uh, so far, everything we've been listening to, I've been like, yeah, they're good. Cool. Uh, you know, speaking of Neon Genesis, uh, you know, someone who's been, you know, a part of the process of Eva for so many years. Uh, what's your, what do you think is the, the meaning behind Eva? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't even try. I've heard so many, you know, it's like I look at it and I just think, you know what, it's it's people striving to be their best against all odds and against themselves. You know, for me, when I, when, cause people, <coughs> excuse me, in the, in the, in the personal growth realm, people have, have told me uh, for years how 
my portrayal of Shinji helped heal them because they could feel what I was feeling and and emoting as Shinji. And it was basically giving them a voice. Um, so it was something that helped them to deal with their issues. And I, I think that's very powerful because when you have somebody that you can kind of use as a sounding board and you can learn, you go, oh, OK, well, this character I can understand. And it's been a very powerful uh, metaphor, a very powerful tool for a lot of people and has helped them come out of their shell. And I hope that helps, uh, you know, the, the Netflix uh, version will help a lot more people because more people will see it. Way more people will see it than ever saw the original. Um, so, I mean, that's that's a great thing. I wish it was my voice, but OK, <laughs> but at least it's out there for people to, to see. That's that's true. Uh, you know, you know, speaking of, you know, since, you know, your book's coming out soon with the. Uh, uh, what would you say is sort of the strangest thing that, you know, you've experienced or you've heard of happening in the convention scene? Well, you're going to have to get the book. Um, so many strange things. This book is nothing but crazy, silly, strange, funny things. Um, let's see. What was the craziest? Well, <laughs> uh, the things that I've seen at cons, I would say, well, the tornado was an interesting thing. Um, well, I can tell people, usually I tell people, look, so this, this book will have all the names of everybody in the book. No, nobody, it, I, all the names have been changed. So I don't name anybody's name on anything. Uh, but I tell people, I say, look, some of these stories I know because I was there firsthand. Some of them were told to me and I elaborate and make characters and, and funny things. And so it's a lot of fun. So it's, it's fiction, but uh, a lot of it is uh, very real and did happen. Um, there was a porn star party at Eddie Van Halen's house um, that happened very early on in my career. And uh, I just tell people I was the one on the water slide. So that's something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> it's called uh, Dances with Porn Stars. Uh, that's the name of the story. Oh, that, that's uh, great. We might just just saying the hell of the night. <laughs> <laughs> so just to sort of finish it up, uh, you know, I, how did you get into, you know, business coaching? Because you've gone, you know, voice acting, acting. Yeah. You know, well, you know, it's oddly business. enough, I, st I was teaching... Um, uh, acting, the business of acting back in Houston, uh, back in the early 2000s. And uh, I began doing real estate investment back in 97. So I flipped houses for about 10 years in Houston. So I flipped out over 60 houses on my own. And um, so I started thinking, well, I love, I love speaking. Uh, I love being in front of people. I love to present. I love to help. I love to uh, motivate and help people be better than they are. And I said, well, you know, I'm going to do that. So uh, I got licensed for uh, neuro-linguistic programming coaching. So that's NLP. That's the basis of all of uh, Tony Robbins' work. Uh, I got trained by the people who trained him. Uh, I got trained in the bank uh, personality sales training system. I'm a licensed uh, certified trainer there. And it's B-A-N-K. Uh, but it's it's not what most people think it's you know b period a period n period k period and it's the the number one uh, personality sales training in the world it's absolutely amazing um we're training google uh sales force um and my wife is also a, a certified high performance coach with brendan burchard so and that's brendan is oprah's coach so we've got really really great training and through doing the uh don't kill your date and other cooking tips i just found it's like you know what guys need help People need help. Guys don't ask for help as much as they should. And so I figured, well, you know, successful guys can be, you know, they can have, be very, very successful, but the relationships are not good. And I figured, you know, communication is my key. I understand communication. And I was like, you know, I have a way, I have a gift that God gave me. I need to use it. And so I speak, I can do goofy ass voices. And that's, that's my hook. I say, uh, my thing is Spike Spencer talks goofy for a living, seriously. <laughs> so that's whenever I train, you know, all kinds of voices come out. It doesn't matter. Something's going to come silly. 
<laughs> so you never know what's going to happen. Um, but that's what I did. I just want to help. Um, and I've got a gift for it. So there you go. Cool. Well, thanks for, you know, coming on the, the Geek Era podcast. I uh, hope you come visit, you know, us in Ireland sometime. I would love to. I'm looking forward to it. I've been, I've driven all over Ireland three times now. Um, and the last I was, uh, last con I went to out there was Akuma Con, I think, back in uh, Galway uh, many years ago. So, yeah, I'm due for a, another trip out there soon. And uh, love to, love to, just anybody who's watching this, tell your local con, get Spike back out here. Um, and, you know, what I would say is get Spike, Amanda, and Tiffany out here. Get the three children out there. So uh, the, that's never been done. The fourth impact, that was the case. That's it, man. It's never been done. It's never been done. We've never been to a con, all three of us together. So that's interesting. So, yeah, I just say, um, you know, thank you so much for the time and uh, have people go to my site, spikespencer.com. Uh, under the voice, go there. There's a fan club. Uh, sign up, give me your email, and you can I can let you know what's happening next when the book's coming out, when we're going to do our watch parties, you know everything cool uh and you know thanks for for coming on the podcast man my pleasure my friend